Hello Eve players! In this two part tutorial we'll have a look at the seemingly complicated workings of the fitting screen. Fitting a ship in EVE Online may be one of the biggest challenges you face as a new player. With so many modules and weapons to choose from, how do you decide what is best for your purpose? In this first part we will look at the fitting screen in general, how it works and the basic explanation of your ship's systems. In the second part I will explain the basics of actually fitting a ship, what you should do and what you absolutely shouldn't. So let's start by opening the fitting screen. The screen can be opened by clicking the button in the Neocom to the left, clicking the large button in the station window, or by pressing Alt plus F on your keyboard. The screen can be opened both in station and in space but you won't be able to change your fitting in space unless you have access to a player-owned structure or a specialized ship. With the fitting screen open you will see your active ship surrounded by a ring containing various slots. These slots hold the modules fitted to your ship and come in five different types. If a slot is unavailable on your ship it will be greyed out. First we have the high power slots. These slots are used for all weapon systems and most other modules that can interact with other entities outside of your own ship. Examples of these modules are mining lasers, shield and armor transfer modules, but also fleet boosting modules. Next we have the medium power slots. These slots are typically used for modules that enhance your shield, navigational upgrades such as afterburners and electronic warfare such as warp disruptors or weapon jammers. Medium power modules often need to be activated and are considered active modules. Then we have low power slots. These slots are typically used for modules that enhance your armor, internal ship upgrades such as damage output or resistance, and to increase CPU and power grid of your ship. Low power modules often don't require activation and are considered passive modules. To check what slot a module needs to go in, simply open the information window for that module and look at the fitting tab. If you already have the module in your hangar, you can hover your mouse over the item and the corresponding slots will light up. As you can see, there are a maximum of 8 slots of each power type. Very few ships have all 8 slots of one type available, and to my knowledge, not a single ship has all 24 slots available. The modules that you place in power slots are dependent on two things. All ships have CPU and power grid. Every module in the game will use a certain amount of CPU and power grid. As such you will have to balance your ship fitting so it does not exceed either one. If you add a module for which not enough CPU or power grid is available, the module will not come online and thus cannot be used. Again, you can check how much CPU and power grid a module uses by opening its fitting window and clicking the fitting tab. When enough CPU and power grid is available, you can online a module manually by right clicking on it. It's even possible to online a module in space, though this will require and use 95% of your ship's capacitor. Next to the power slots that nearly all ships have, Tech 3 ships also have 5 subsystem slots. Subsystems greatly influence the abilities and the look of your ship, and all 5 slots have to be fitted before the ship can undock. The last row of slots are meant for rigs. Rigs, like modules, give your ship a boost or bonus in a particular area, often at the expense of something else. Unlike modules, rigs cannot be removed from your ship once they are installed. The only way to remove a rig is to destroy it. Also note that rigged ships cannot be repackaged. Like regular modules, rigs have a limiting factor in the form of calibration, similar to CPU and power grid. If installing a rig would exceed the calibration of your ship, the rig cannot be installed. Let's go back to the weapon systems for a little bit. Like I said before, a ship can have between 1 and 8 high power slots. The turret and launcher hardpoints, which are displayed at the top of the fitting window, will determine how many of each weapon system you are allowed to fit on your ship, regardless of the amount of high power slots available. Turret hardpoints apply to hybrid, projectile and laser weapons. Launcher hardpoints apply to any kind of missile launcher. 
Some ships have more high slots than hard points. In this case, the spare high slots are referred to as utility slots. These can be used for any non-weapon, high power modules such as energy stealing systems, salvagers or tractor beams. Finally, in the bottom left of the fitting window you will see icons and info for your cargo bay and your drone bay. You can open either one by clicking on the respective icon. This covers the main fitting window, but there is more. If you click on the double arrow on the right side of the screen, the fitting window will fold out to include a list of statistics on how your ship will perform out in space. We'll run through them one at a time. At the top of the list you will find the name of your ship and an info icon to show info on your particular ship. Unlike the info window you open from the market, the information about a ship you are currently piloting will account for your skills and update things like fitting information accordingly. Below that is another important system of your ship, the capacitor. All active modules use capacitor power each time they are activated. This includes all weapon systems except missile launchers. The capacitor has two variables, the total capacity and the recharge rate, and both are different for each ship. Shuttles, for example, will have a very low capacity but a relatively high recharge rate, while battleships have a high capacity but a relatively low recharge rate. The fitting window will tell you how long the capacitor will last before it's depleted. For this it assumes all modules are running at once, so you can take this figure with a grain of salt. A skilled pilot will keep a close eye on this capacitor at all times, and knows how to regulate their capacitor by using modules sparingly. If the recharge rate is higher than the consumption, then your capacitor will be shown as stable. Below the capacitor you will find the damage per second your ship is capable of inflicting. This damage takes ammo type into account, but not the overheating of weapons. So again, this figure may be a bit higher in practice. Next comes your defensive capabilities. It shows your effective hit points, which is your total hit points plus the passive recharge rate of your shields. Below that it shows the total hit points for your shield, armor and structure. Most important are your ship's resistances. From left to right it displays your resistance to EM, thermal, kinetic and explosive damage. The percentage you see stands for the amount of damage that is fully negated as it hits you. For example, if you have 50% shield resistance against explosive damage, you will only receive half of the explosive damage you normally would. Shields, armor and structure all have their own resistances that you can upgrade through modules. It should be noted that all values in the defensive tab do not take active modules into account. If you want to see the true values with all your modules running, you need to undock your ship, activate everything and check the fitting screen again. The targeting tab shows your maximum targeting range. Beyond this range you simply won't be able to target anything. Sensor strength determines how effective electronic warfare modules of that specific type are against you. The higher this number the better, but it is not something to bother with unless you expect them to be used in a fight. Scan resolution determines how fast you can lock targets, higher is better. Signature radius is basically how big your ship appears on enemy sensors. A large signature radius will allow your enemies to target you faster and will allow them to fire more accurate shots at you. Your signature radius is hugely influenced by afterburners and micro warp drives. Try activating them in space and see your signature radius skyrocket. You may want to think twice before activating them for an escape. Lastly, the targeting window shows how many targets you can lock at once. This is partially influenced by your targeting skills and by the ship's maximum targets. The navigation tab shows your maximum speed, again not accounting for active afterburners or micro warp drives. Below that it shows your ship's mass and its inertia modifier. Mass cannot be positively influenced at all. The only modules that influence mass do so in a negative way by increasing it. Inertia can be lowered by skills and certain modules. You'll generally want this as low as possible. Mass and inertia determine how agile your ship is. This in turn determines how fast your ship accelerates and thus how fast it can turn. Both acceleration and turning speed are important factors in reducing the time it takes to warp away. Warp speed is largely unimportant since it can't be influenced in any way. 
just know that smaller ships are often faster in warp than larger ships and can easily overtake you if they warp at the same time. Last but not least, the fitting window has three buttons that allows you to save your current ship fitting, browse existing fittings or strip your entire fitting so you can start over. I hope this tutorial cleared up some of the mysteries of the fitting window for you. In the next tutorial we'll look into some of the basic rules when fitting a ship, as there are certain things you should never ever do. If you have any questions please feel free to ask them in the comment section below and I will be glad to answer them. And of course if you're not playing EVE yet check out the exclusive 21 day trial offer in the video description. Thank you for watching and see you next time!